Now, the good thing is that everybody loves storage. Like all lenders love storage. Storage is gonna be easier. Storage is actually easier to fund than like multifamily or residential right now, right? So y'all are in the right spot. And, um, but now what you gotta do, is anybody, is anybody out there looking right now for storage? Tell me if you, yes, I'm looking for storage or say, if, you, if you're saying no, does that mean, uh, like I have no idea where to even start to look for storage, okay? So I have an idea. And you want to know, just like I said, the primary market, the secondary market, and the tertiary market. Everybody that posted, you guys are all in primary markets, okay? So Tampa, Orlando, Annapolis, you know, all these different areas, these are all primary markets. So what that means is that you got to have some money to buy. you got to either have money to the 20% to put down and have good credit so that you can go out and get your own loan. Or right, or you have to know where you can find money. And then you can find the money to put down and then still borrow to get the money. Or you're going to have to like be creative, right? Which is like so fun too, which is like, how do I, um, how do I get the owners to finance for me? Okay, so for instance, like right now, I have a property that we're looking at. And it's like in between two highways, like two, like not like not like major highways but kind of like bigger road like bigger roads I don't know what they're called and like um you know and so and it's like it's like a six acre square in between two kind of major roads and like uh, out of a city and the city's like it kind of goes up straight like this or like this right and so that little piece kind of like right in the middle is what it is it's six acres okay and there's 170 uh units on there right? So six acres for 170 units, you already know that uh, 937 acres, if you mean 937 units is like a 10 acre lot, if you do long ways or hike, it would be like three acres, maybe four acres, something like that, okay? So it's 170 units, it's taking up every 100 units is about, um, is about one acre, okay? So, um, so that one takes up like 170 units takes up maybe like two acres of this six acre lot okay and um and then the back end on the back end so you drive in on like one side you drive in and that's where all the units are and then you could just keep going straight and in the back essentially this guy is like the guy that owns the property and the units are like run down like in like i think four or five units there was a fire and um he got like the money to fix the units and he never fixed it. He just like pocketed the money. So now the, there's still like five or six units or whatever it is that are just like burnt out and he's not even fixing them. And then in the back of the facility where it's supposed to be just like grassland or whatever, essentially what he did is he, re he like separated those out that four acres into like six different areas. And he rents each of those areas out for like whatever the people want to do. And like one of the areas is a like is a car, it's like a dumping ground for cars. Like the guy like trades like crappy cars. And then like he's in and out and just like throwing like cars wherever. And there's one, I mean, it's just like the whole four acres of that lot is just like destroyed and it's just horrible and it's just trashy and it's disgusting. And then, but he's making like, he makes on that six acres. What he's telling me is that he's making a hundred thousand dollars. Um, a year. And he's like, he's like, I'm thinking I'm making about a hundred thousand dollars. And it's okay. Well, can you show that? Can you prove that to me? And he's like, no, there's no, I can never prove that to you because I only take cash. He's like, every once in a while I'll get some checks. I'll put that into the bank, but most of the time I'm just getting cash. And, uh, you know, so no, I said, well, what can you prove to me that you're making? And he said, maybe $50,000. And he had listed the property for sale last year for $800,000. And that's what he wants. He, and in his mind, he's like, I want $800,000. And he, he bought the thing probably like 10 years ago for about $450,000, $400,000, something like that. So he wants to double the value, you know, which makes sense, you know, to me. I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to double my value too. And uh, so, so, I mean, basically what I told him is like, he had listed it, nobody bought it. And I, and I basically, I told him, I said, you know, nobody can buy this thing. 
uh, you know, unless, you know, unless you own or finance it. And I'm willing to pay what you want to sell for it if you own or finance it to me. That's, and what I want, my terms are, if you want to pay, if you want me to pay $800,000, there's no interest and there's no down payment. If you do that, I'll buy this property from you. And so he said, yes. He said, yes. Can you imagine? So now what we're doing is we're like trying to figure out because the, uh, the 170 units are kind of like dumpy. And then he's got like, I mean, all the back areas. So we're trying to figure out like what it's going to cost us to really clean this property up because essentially we're going to have to come out of pocket to clean the property up to get like, you know, and then what can we do with this property? Right. So the question is like, do we want to build like more units on the back end, you know, clean it up and build it, make it look nice. Or do we want to do something else? Maybe like sell that land off. You know, how much money is that land off? Because it's in a it's in a very up and coming area, uh, like the, one of the hottest, fastest growing areas of Atlanta. What would y'all do? What's your opinion on that? First of all, would you buy something like that? But the uh the idea is that um first of all it's making a hundred thousand it's make, supposedly making a hundred thousand a month um but um you know is there an opportunity there and would that be something that you guys are interested in that is a mismanaged facility and those are the kind of facilities that we me and my husband buy my husband like when he heard that when he heard about that deal he was just like i could tell his heart was like i want this property so bad he likes dumpy facility or dumpy anything he just loves it and uh, and so do i really so the question to for me to you is like would you be interested in buying a property like that now number one now just because he's gonna own or finance it to me doesn't mean it's a good deal all right so yeah i am gonna get it zero money a zero dollars down zero percent interest eight hundred thousand dollars and we're gonna have to pay a mortgage every single month on that all right, that sounds like a totally awesome deal without knowing like what the true numbers are. The question is how much money can I truly make on that property? And that's what we're looking into now. So we already know that he wants to sell. He's willing to own or finance it to us. So the question is, can we really make money on this property, enough money to actually pay him and make money afterwards and do something with it? All right, and that's the quite that's what kind of what we're looking for. Now I consulted somebody um, like maybe a month or so ago and um, he had bought a $1.4 million facility. And I'm telling you that these types of facilities are out there if you look for them, because I talk to students and I talk to people all the time that, um, and I just, I literally just got off a, a consultation like just like 30 minutes ago with another one. But this guy, he had bought a $1.4 million facility, like 200 units, something like this, maybe 200 units or something. And um, the owner, oh, the owner, zero percent down. Owner financed it for zero percent down, and um, and so the guy was like, "Yeah, I'll take your storage facility." You know, it had no idea how to run deal analysis on the facility. And uh, once we went through and ran the deal analysis, and, and, and the reason he had set up a call with me was because he wanted to know what his facility was worth. He, in his mind, not knowing how to run deal analysis, he, in his mind, thought that the facility was like worth like $1.7 million. That's what his, his mind was. And so we, he, I gave, he gave me essentially what his purchase price was. He gave me the loan terms, right? The owner finance loan terms. He gave me the purchase price of, not the purchase price, sorry, the, um, the um, annual income, the total square footage um, and the number of units, right? And then, and then also the expenses of whatever, you know, what's his taxes and insurance utilities and then like all his expenses and stuff. And we calculated that all in. And in the end, when we ran the numbers, $1.4 million, right? We actually, after we ran the numbers, we found out that $1.4 million was too expensive. He, the, pro, the property at 90% full, which is what it was, 90% full, was worth $1.2 million. So he had overpaid 
$200,000 for that facility. And he had already owned that facility for two years. And so basically my advice to him was like, this is a buy and hold. You're gonna have to hold on to this for a long time in order to appreciate it to what it's gonna be worth, you know, and to what you can like break even and actually make no money on it. Now he's making money on a monthly basis on it, right? But he told me he's also just barely breaking even on that because his mortgage is taking up so much of his uh, his income every single month, right? It's like a, you know, like ridiculous six, $7,000 mortgage every single month. And he's only making like $10,000 or something. And then, um, and then on top of that, um, and, and then on top of that, you know, he's like, I basically said, you have to hold on to this property, but you also, you have to increase those rates every nine months, every nine months, you have to increase the rates of the, of the tenants that are already there. Okay, so and then the question is, is like, is it a primary, secondary or tertiary markets? We buy mostly in secondary and tertiary, not in primary markets. And in tertiary markets, what we've learned over the past five years by calculating our retention rate and our customer lifetime value is that our customers in our tertiary markets stay for very long times, years and years and years. And so every, like they come in, when they come in nine months later, they get an increase, all right? And then nine months later, we increase again and they still stay because they've been staying for so long. Tertiary market tenants stay for a very long time. We have long-term tenants in our, um, like literally years. Like when we bought one of our facilities, they had already, like most of those people had been there for at least 10 years. And when we bought and turned over, let's say half of them left, right? Because we doubled the price of the monthly payment. And then the other half are still there. And they had already been there for 10 years. And now there are another five years there. And we have been increasing the rate of their rent every nine months since we've bought the place. All right. And so that's how you value add a property that may just be breaking even. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people just don't realize how to, you know, realize that you can do that. So they're always like, as soon as I buy that property, you know, the mismanaged property, I'm going to increase the rates. That's basically what they say, right? As soon as I buy it, I'm going to increase the rates. And, um, but then they don't put in, they don't calculate how, how much money they could actually make by increasing the tenant rates by 5% or whatever percentage that you want to do based on your market every nine months. All right. And every storage facility or facility owner that I know that I talk to on a regular basis, they're every nine months increasing those rates. So make sure that you do that when you do, especially Kevin, you guys as well, too. When you get that facility, you've got to calculate, you know, because especially y'all, because I mean, when you first get that in, I mean, it takes time to fill that thing up. You know, take it takes time to fill everything up and, and mismanaged facilities it takes a good six months to a year to even like, if we buy something that's 25 to 50% full, it's taking us six months to a year to get that full. New construction is gonna take longer than that to get that full. And an income producing property, I mean, essentially those are already pretty, you know, pretty much full or full. And, um, but it's still like, you'll have some people that leave and it'll take a little bit of while to fill those up again as well too. So you gotta, you gotta take that into effect. But even though, like what I'm saying is that he had, he thought that he got a really good deal. It was a $1.4 million facility at 0% interest, no down payment. In the end, after two years of owning that thing, it was only worth $1.2 million. And he was, he was really pretty upset. And then I just did a consultation literally today. And, um, the guy wanted to know if it was a good deal and it was a he the, the owner wanted to sell it for three million dollars and he will owner finance it with zero percent down all right and no zero percent down i'm sorry sorry zero dollars down zero percent interest three million dollars and it's a 200 and uh it's a 220 unit facility 220 unit facility now granted it was in um i was in delaware it was in delaware and, uh, and so the, so he was like, is this a good deal? You know, so he set up a time that we went through the deal analyzer and I, I calculated and ran the numbers 
And essentially that deal was, that deal, if he bought it as a 5% cap rate, 5% cap rate, and it was in a tertiary market. I guess Delaware is maybe secondary to tertiary. We were like in the middle of nowhere, Delaware, essentially. And it's like a secondary to tertiary market. Secondary to tertiary market should be like, you know, seven to eight cap at least, you know, and you're buying it. A seven to eight cap was like a two point, maybe a 2.3 to $2.5 million facility. And so what we calculated is that it was, there was enough room to build like 20,000 square feet more. It was a 30,000 square foot facility and he wanted to build another 20,000. So 20,000 square feet is gonna cost you $25 a square foot. So it costs you 500 grand or whatever to build to build another, you know, five five hundred fifty thousand dollars to build some more units. So that means it's gonna cost him another $500,000 and he'd be in the whole $500,000 which brought his cap rate even down lower. Right. So even though the owner said, you know, I'll sell this thing for $3 million, 0%, you know, 0% interest, zero down. What she mean, he thought it was a good deal, but in the end, it wasn't a good deal. So I personally told him and he had enough money for the down payment. He had a couple, he has a couple hundred thousand dollars. And so that's what he was trying to do was leverage his down payment and buy a bigger facility. And so he could put it, he, he, he was going to put 20% down. And that's what the, that's what the owner wanted was 20% down owner financed the rest at like, you know, 0% interest for, you know, you know, um, something like that. Anyways, in the end, it ended up being like a five cap. And the only way that he could make money is to put himself in the hole for several years in order to value add and add that extra like 20,000 square feet. So I basically told him like a 2.3 to $2.5 million purchase price is what I would have been at for those properties. And that's really kind of high, honestly. Now that facility was, was full. I was like, oh, that was completely full, that facility. So it, it is worth more money. Remember that, um, Remember that I said one of my, the very first student, another Victoria, another student of mine, she's, she just found a property, $1.7 million for 350 units. And it's a, it's a mismanaged facility. So yeah, the first year is going to be like, you know, coming out of pocket. But um, after that, she's going to double the, she's going to double the value and make, you know, a million, million and a half dollars, you know. So those deals are out. And even though a, my point is that even so though somebody wants to own or finance to you, that doesn't mean it's a good deal. The question is, can you value add that property? And if you can, how much money can you make on it in the long run? Okay. Does that make sense to y'all?